How do we engage on some things with people, people who disagree, even disagree fundamentally? And how do we seek to bridge those differences? If that's our aim for the tone and fundamental goal of conversation and dialogue within, within the country and within our society, then it's the same obligation for us in light of the gospel. The word unity confuses people. I think accompaniment, dialogue doesn't confuse people. We're not gonna have the same opinion on things, right? And we have to advocate forcefully and we don't have to make everybody a jack of all trades and master of none. You know, I, I don't require anybody on this phone call to speak at crisis pregnancy centers, <clears throat> uh, but they should say to me, right on sister. And then I say right on to all of those who have made their brilliant and beautiful expertise opening up to a more generous immigration system, taking real steps to end structural racism. Ask yourself, what are you so afraid of? What is it about this country that that you're afraid of the change that you see? What is it about your neighbor that's making you so angry? We are the country and the country reflects us. Our leaders reflect us. And I think if we start, start with that internal reflection, um, then we can project out externally uh, the gospel uh, and everything else that comes from that. We got a sweet fear from our doorsteps when it arrives. And we got to keep this notion of hope. We have lost hope. Hope in its most powerful since my grandmother, and I'll close. That woman has so much faith, born right after slavery, and given us that hope, feeding that hope in us every day is what we should do in our lives to remove fear and doubt and hate. Because that is not of God, that is the devil, and we gotta rebuke that.